Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how to order things. And we call it combinatorics if we're speaking sort of generally. And then I wrote labeling principle there because that's going to be sort of a, a certain way that we're going to figure things out. Okay, it's going to be like sort of a formula that we're going to use. So let's start with this first example. This says, five people are running a race. And you want to know how many ways can they cross the finish line? Okay, so... In this situation, I'd say, okay, well, I have five people. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and I want to know how many ways they can cross the finish line. Well, if I have five people and one of them has to come in first, well, how many choices do I have for that person to come in first? How many people are running? Well, I would have five choices for that person to come in first. Now, once that person comes in first, how many people are still running? Four. So in order for me to figure out how many choices I have for second place, that's going to be one less because I already have a first place person. How many people can come in third place? Well, two people have already crossed the finish line, so I have three left, and then two, and then one. So what I'm going to do with all these numbers is I'm going to multiply them together. Okay? So this means that I have 120 ways for those five people to cross the finish line. I have 120 orders or certain orderings of those people. Now, thinking back to the video that you just watched, you should recognize that this is the same as what we call five factorial, right? Because the definition of factorial in this case is five times four times three times two times one, which again is 120 ways, okay? So if I've got this total number of people and I'm trying to put all of them in order, that's just going to be using factorial, by factorial, okay? Now, what if we change it up a little bit? I have five people running a race, and I want to know how many ways can there be a first place winner, a second place winner, and a third place winner? And I sort of don't really care about fourth and fifth place. I don't really care about the other people that, have, um, that are running. So the best way to do this is let's just start with all five. Okay, so we'll start with how to order all five, which we just did. So if I start with all five, that's going to be five factorial. Okay, now because I only care about a certain number of people, I sort of want to do some division here to get rid of the things that I don't care about, okay? So if I only care about the first three, I only care about the first three people that cross the finish line, then this two times one is something that I don't really care about. So I need to get rid of that. I need to sort of cancel that out from my answer. So if I want to cancel that out, I'm just going to divide by it. And if I look at factorials, that means I'm dividing by 2 factorial. And I'm actually sort of done here because the 2 times 1 is really the only thing that I don't care about. Okay? This is sort of called the labeling principle, or this is what we call the labeling principle. Okay? So what the labeling principle does is it sort of gives us groups. We're like grouping the total number of things that we have. Okay? So the groups that I have are first place, that is one person. Second place is also one person. And third place is also one person. And then I have everyone else. Okay, and everyone else is two people. So what the labeling principle tells me to do is take the uh, total ways I can group everybody, which is how many ways I can group all five, and divide it by the orderings of these groups. So this has worked out perfectly for me because the ordering of everybody else is just two times one. And if all of these groups have one person, I would just put in like a one factorial, one factorial, one factorial kind of situation. But remember that those are all just ones and anytime you divide by one, you know, nothing really happens. So my answer in this case is five times four times three which is 60 ways. Okay? Now, the other cool thing is that this can also be done on your calculator, which we're going to talk about later in the video, but you call this a permutation. 
and you use that word because in this case, order matters. It matters who is first, who is second, and who is third, okay? And the calculator recognizes this, okay? And we're gonna talk in class about how to push all these buttons on the calculator, but the calculator has notation of five permutation three. And what this is basically doing is it's using the formula up above that we have there. So the calculator knows to do 5 factorial over 2 factorial, and it's going to spit out 60. Because that big P is telling the calculator that it's a permutation, and that order in your problem is going to matter. Okay, we're going to talk about that a little bit later today, as well as in class. Okay, let's sort of change this problem up yet again. You have five people that are running a race, and you want to know how many ways can there be a top three. So in this case, we want to know who's in the top three, but the order in which they are in doesn't really matter. Okay, so it's almost like maybe you're running a race and you have people that are qualifying to move on. So as long as they finish in the top three, they qualify. It doesn't matter if they're first, second, or third. All right, so let's maybe start with taking a look at the labeling principle. So the labeling principle will tell us that we have two groups. We have the top three, which consists of three people, and then we have everyone else, which are two people. So we would start with how many we have, like start with how much we're ordering. So we are ordering five people, and we're going to divide by our two groups, three factorial, two factorial. Okay, the three factorial is the top three, and the two factorial is everybody else. Now, if we were to expand this out, let's talk about it. We have five times four times three times two times one. That's five factorial over three factorial is three times two times one, and then two factorial is two times one. Okay, now this makes sense so far because Remember that we only care about the top three. The top three are the only ones we care about. So given what we have so far, we're sort of eliminating everyone else. We're eliminating the people that we don't care about. We don't care about when they cross, how they cross, anything like that. Now, the reason that we're sort of still dividing here, the reason we're still dividing five times four times three by three times two times one, is that there's gonna be some repeats and we need to eliminate those repeats. Okay, because if you have three people who cross the finish line, they could come in first, second, third. They could come in in any different order, but we don't care about the order that they come in. We just want to know that they are crossing the finish line. So in this case, we're sort of dividing to eliminate repetition. Okay. We're dividing to eliminate repetition. So that's going to come out to be 10. Which makes sense, right? There should always be less in this case if you don't care about the order. Okay, now the word that we use when we don't care about the order, we call it a combination. Okay, because you're sort of like combining the things that are coming in. So we're going to do a combination here. And the calculator uses a big C for that, 5C3. And the calculator knows this formula, so it would sort of plug in all that stuff. It would plug in 5 factorial over 3 factorial, 2 factorial. The calculator knows that, and then it would spit out 10. Okay? So, again, if you think about it, you'll always have less combinations than permutations, right? Because you're not caring about the order in which things are happening. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at um, a problem that's a little bit different. All right, you're creating a license plate with eight characters. The first three are letters with no repetition, and the following five are numbers with no repetition. How many plates are possible? Okay, so, I mean, we could use the labeling principle here. That could work for us, right? We're sort of, we're ordering eight things, and but the three and the five are sort of different, and the order in which the three and the five things happen is important here, right? The order that we choose the letters in and the order that we choose the numbers in is important. 
So let me just sort of make a little diagram here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters, right? Now, the first three have to be letters. And the last five have to be numbers. Now, I'm not allowed to do any re repetition here. So if I were to pick my first letter, well, there are 26 letters in the alphabet. So if I were to pick my first letter, I would have 26 choices. And then how many choices would I have for the second letter if I'm not allowed to repeat? So since I'm not allowed to repeat, I've already chosen one letter. So the next would be 25 choices and then 24 choices. I'd be multiplying these together. Now if you think about it, that's really 26 total letters and you want permutations with three of them. Okay. Now moving on to the numbers here, well, there are, technically there are 10 single digits, right? Zero through nine. So the first option I have, I could have zero through nine, that's 10 options. Since I'm not allowed to have repetition, the next choice is nine, eight for the next, seven, and then six. And I'm gonna multiply all these together. Multiply them two here. So if you think about it, that's really 10 P five and all of this is being multiplied together. Okay, that's a, obviously a very large number. But here you can see that these are all of the different ways that you would be able to create a license plate. 26 times 25 times 24 times 10 times nine times eight times seven times six. Okay, now the next question is, what if the letters and numbers could be anywhere? What if it wasn't the first three and the last five? How would that change? Well, I still have eight spots. Okay, now any one of these spots could be a letter or a number. So how many choices then do I have for each slot? Well, there's 26 letters and there's 10 digits. So I have 36 choices here for the first slot. No repetition. So it's sort of gonna go down the line here. And I would multiply these together and get a huge number. Which is also the same as 36 total things and you want to pick or permutations with eight of them. Okay, so in that case, you're sort of thinking about how many total things you have in this case because you have more total things per slot. Okay, let's just quickly talk about the calculator for a minute. So what's the calculator doing? Well, the calculator sort of assigns variables to the problem that you're working on. So the calculator uses N for the total number of things that you're trying to order and R for the number that you are using or the number that you are choosing to order. Okay, so the calculator knows the difference between a permutation and a combination. So as soon as you decide whether or not the order matters, the calculator will be able to do the formula for you. So if we think back to the horse race question, or sorry, the people racing question, we had five, pick three. That was people coming in first, second, and third place. So that was five factorial over one factorial, one factorial, one factorial, and then two factorial. So what the calculator does is it says that five is n and r is three, and it says, okay, I'm gonna take n factorial and divide it by the quantity n minus r factorial, okay? Which makes sense here because n is five, and then five minus three is two. Okay, and of course, if you divide something by one, it doesn't really change anything. So that's what the calculator is doing for permutations. And then for combinations, five C three, remember that that was five factorial over three factorial, two factorial. So again, the five is N and the three is R. And it's saying, okay, I'm gonna do n factorial over 
r factorial and then the quantity n minus r factorial. Okay? Which again makes sense according to our problem because n is 5, r was 3, and then the difference between 5 and 3 is 2 factorial. So again, we're going to talk more about how to get these um, buttons on the calculator in class, and good luck with figuring out these problems. Thanks, everyone.